Hi everybody, welcome to this video on understanding what are the different types of option payoffs. If you're interested in a career in fund accounting, corporate action, straight life cycle or OTC derivatives, do subscribe to my YouTube channel where I provide content rich research focused material on these topics. So let's head straight away into understanding what are options. If you've already seen the earlier video that I've created on options, then this is a consequence. This is a sequential to that. Otherwise, just take a look at the video. The comment, the first comment, will have the link of that first video. Options are exchange traded derivatives, also called as listed derivatives, and the underlying asset, like all derivatives, the price of the derivative is derived from the price of the underlying asset. Options are exchange traded derivatives, where the underlying asset can be equities or bonds or sometimes even foreign exchange. Okay. Sometimes we also have exotic options which are traded in the OTC markets, but those are more like structured products rather than just being directly call options and put options that can otherwise be traded. A call option is an option that gives the buyer the right to buy the underlying asset. The term call option is defined as a product which allows the holder or the owner of the option whether to exercise or allow the option to lapse. Because the buyer has all the entitlements under an option, the buyer pays a premium to the option writer. Option writer is also called as the option seller. Okay, so like every uh, trade, there are two counterparties, the buyer and the seller. The buyer has all the rights and because he gets all the rights, he has to pay the premium to the option seller. A put option, gives the buyer the right to sell the underlying now don't get confused okay you might say what is this how can you buy some how can you buy a right to sell well if you own an asset you want to sell it but you're not sure about the price at which you want to sell it you might want to consider buying a right to sell okay so put options give the buyer the right to sell the underlying asset and because this buyer has all the rights they must pay a premium to the option seller also called as the option writer. So don't get confused. I'm using both the English words of write, R-I-G-H-T, as well as write, W-R-I-T-E, because options are contracts and somebody who writes a contract is a seller of the underlying asset. Okay, that's all there is to it. I'll refrain from using the term writer as much as possible if it creates some bit of confusion because of the continuous and frequent use of the word uh, right as an R-I-G-H-T. The strike price of an option is the price at which the underline can be executed. Okay, it's in some books called as an exercise price. All of them mean the same thing. It's the execution price of trading the underlying asset. So the stock exchanges release the options at different strike prices. That is the price at which you can exercise the underlying asset. Option premium is the premium that is paid by the buyer to the seller. In option terminology, the option premium is also called as the price of the option. Different strike prices have different option premium. Okay. And this video is all about understanding that. Okay, about understanding what do we mean by profitability of an option. Option premium is always paid by the buyer to the seller and therefore it does not depend on whether the option is going to be exercised or not exercised. Hence, option payment, option premium payment takes place on the trade date irrespective of expiry. Okay. So whether it's exercised or whether it's lapsed, the premium is always paid by the buyer to the seller of the option. This video is going to focus entirely on something called as moneyness of an option. Understanding at what point of time the option becomes profitable to exercise. So who has all the rights? The holder or the buyer of the option has all the rights. And therefore, we are going to only calculate the moneyness of the option from the point of view of the holder or the buyer. It makes 
little or no sense to calculate the option moneyness from the seller's point of view unless the seller is designing a straddle strategy or a corridor strategy, in which case the payoffs will be different. Understanding this moneyness is described graphically through the payoff diagrams. And in the money option, ITM, first ask the question, will the holder exercise the option? Whether it's a call option or a put option, whether the holder will exercise the option. If it is profitable, he will exercise the option. Such an option is called an in the money option. Let's go straight away into my dear friend Hari Hedge Fund, which is a completely fictitious hedge fund. There's no fund with the name of Hari Hedge Fund, I think, in the world, and I hope there is none because it's my favorite term over here takes a long position in a call option. That means Hari Hedge Fund has bought a call option on KH Inc., which is the underlying asset. The strike price of that call option is $100 and Hari Hedge Fund has paid a premium of $2 for that. So let's get the terms right again. The strike price is $100. Hari Hedge Fund must pay $2 for that. Uh, option okay let's take a look if the spot price of the underlying asset is greater than the strike price the spot price is equal to hundred and five dollars the strike price is hundred dollars the premium paid is two dollars so the break-even price is hundred and two dollars so if the spot price is greater than the strike price let's take a look at what happens over here this is explained graphically through the payoff diagrams, which is very, very easy to understand. Okay, so this is the payoff diagram for a call option buyer. The $100 is the strike price. The buyer must pay $2 premium, which is a cost for him always. And the break-even price is $102. For all option buyers, the loss is limited to the premium that is paid okay so the premium is the cost of the option and that is the maximum loss that the holder of the option has continuing with the same uh, data points the strike price is 100 the premium paid is two dollars the break-even point is 102 dollars the as the price moves away from 102 the buyer of the option will definitely exercise the option Therefore, as price increases to 103 and more, the option becomes in the money. Such an option where the buyer will definitely want to buy the KH Inc. shares at $102 instead of $105, which is available in the market, is called as in the money options. Okay. Continuing with the concept of option moneyness, is it profitable for the holder to exercise? out of the money option answers this question by saying no it is not profitable for the option holder to exercise let's take a look at hurry hedge fund again if the spot price is lesser than the strike price which was hundred dollars and the break-even price is two dollars given that the premium paid is two dollars the spot price is 95 dollars Will the buyer, will Hari Hedge Fund exercise this option? Will he choose to buy at 100 when he can buy in the market at 95? So the payoff diagram for a call option buyer, $100 is the strike price, $102 is the break even. As the price goes below the strike price, $100, it becomes an out of the money option or OTM. Let's say the price became $95. The buyer will not exercise the option. In fact, the maximum loss to the buyer is $2 at the premium that is paid. Okay. Extending the logic to put option. Hari Hedge Fund has bought a, a put option. That's a right to sell the underlying asset. The strike price is $100. The premium paid is $2. Now, in a put option, the buyer pays the premium. Therefore, the break-even price will be lesser than the strike price. The break-even price is now 100, 100 minus $2, that's 
If the spot price of the underlying asset is lesser than the strike price, let's say the spot price is $95, the strike price is $100, the break-even price is $98. Do you think Hari Hedge Fund will exercise this put option? What do you say? You're guessing they will exercise or not exercise? They will exercise because they can sell at 100 whereas if they go to the market and sell, they try to can sell only at 95 so let's look at option moneyness. Answers just one question. Is it profitable for the holder to exercise? And in the money option says yes. Let's draw the payoff diagrams. $100 is the strike price. $2 is the premium pay. The $98 is the break even point. As already discussed, the option buyer or the option holder has limited losses and the losses are limited to the premium that is paid. Therefore, as the prices go below 98, I'm sorry, as the prices go below 98, then the option becomes in the money, okay? The option becomes in the money as the prices go below 98. If the price becomes 94, 95, it is greatly in the money because he's getting a right to sell at a higher price, okay? compared to at this price. So now let's take a look at again the OTM for a put option. Answers the simple question whether it's profitable for the holder to exercise and out of the money option says no do not exercise because you will be willfully taking up a loss. Hari Hedge Fund bought a put option. If the spot price is greater than the strike price Hurry Hedge Fund will just allow the option to lapse. Let's say the spot price is $105, the strike price is $100, the break-even price is $98. The $100 is the strike price, $98 is the break-even price. As the prices go beyond $100, let's say it becomes $103, $104 and beyond, the option buyer will just allow the option to lapse. Such an option where it is unprofitable for the buyer to exercise the option is called as an OTM option or out of the money option. Summing up everything, call option. If spot price is greater than strike price, it's an in the money option. You're exercising the option. If spot price is lesser than the strike price, you'll allow the option to lapse. Such an option is an OTM option. In a put option, if the spot price is lesser than the strike price, it's an in the money option. You will exercise a put option when the strike price is higher than the spot price. And lastly, if the spot price of an underlying asset is greater than the strike price, such an option is called as an OTM option or out of the money option. Thank you so much for listening into this video.